Hello everyone, welcome to my video. My name is Xu Mi Zhao. I'm a PhD candidate in Simple Geophysics Project. And my supervisor is Dr. Elita Li. I'm working on dust data processing, mainly focused on the dust data recording in the urban environment. In this video, I will share with you my work on urban near surface monitoring with dust. The first part is introduction. In this part, I will briefly introduce the research background and the basis of DAS, and then I will talk about the existing challenges and the motivations of my work. Near surface refers to the top tens of meters of the subsurface. It supports all the infrastructures in our life, such as roads and buildings. The health condition of the near surface is very crucial to our safety. With the increasing population in the urban area, and the development of urban environments. More and more infrastructures and facilities are built underground. This figure shows the underground of Singapore. Before building these facilities, a good knowledge of the near surface, such as the geology structure and cell properties, is essential to mitigate the potential risks. Near surface imaging means imaging the near surface velocity model and the cell properties. Among the many geophysical near-surface imaging methods, seismic survey using the propagation of elastic wave to image the subsurface is the most widely used method. These are the applications of near-surface imaging. Site investigation means before construction, engineers need to have an accurate understanding of the near-surface geology condition and cell properties. We can also monitor the potential risks in the construction site. Besides, it can also be used to monitor the near-surface hazards, such as sinkholes and landslides, and underground facilities, such as pipelines. The sources used to generate the elastic waves contain active source and ambient noise. The use of ambient noise source reduces the acquisition cost greatly, and it has made great contribution to the urban environment monitoring, where it's not convenient to use vibrations and dangerous to use explosive sources. Ambient noise mainly contains surface waves. There are mainly two types of surface waves. For really wave, its particle motion is an elliptical retrograde motion. The particle motion of a large wave forms a horizontal line perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Ambient noise mainly contains natural vibrations and anthropological activities. Traffic noise is the main source in the urban environments. There are mainly two kinds of receivers to collect the ambient noise, geophone and dust. So what is dust? Dust is a technology that converts a fiber optic cable into an array of densely distributed sensors and involves continuous real-time measurements along the entire length of a fiber optic cable. The system of DAS consists of an interrogator unit and a fiber optic cable. The interrogator sends probe pulses to the fiber and then receives the corresponding backscatter light signals from the natural defects in the glass which form in the fiber. The acoustic information is obtained by analyzing the changes in the face of the backscatter light signals for successive probe light signals. This table shows the comparison between conventional sensors and dust. Conventional sensor measures displacement or particle velocity, while dust measures strain or strain rate. And the formula here shows their relationship. There are several studies on near surface imaging using dust data. Among them, Reliable subsurface information can be obtained from hours, days, or even months long dust data. The extracted seismic interferometry from ambient noise is usually asymmetric due to the non uniform distribution of the ambient noise in the urban environment. The velocity information we get is apparent velocity. Although there are two cases using beamforming on the dust data to resolve the main propagation direction of the ambient noise wave field. The dust data they are dealing with were generated from unit source. However, beamforming hasn't been applied on ambient noise dust recordings. Besides, how to identify the wave type from the ambient noise is not given or not clear in the literature. The existing challenges of dust data processing are that the data set is huge and the computational cost is quite high when processing long period of dust data. 
when that C is used for near surface monitoring purpose. Real time information is needed. Besides, how to detect the main source propagation direction of ambient noise wind field and identify the wave type from the ambient noise recordings are also need to be solved. So here are my motivations. Can we extract reliable subsurface information from short period of test data so that we can avoid the high computational cost and obtain the information in real time? To achieve this objective, we need to do very careful data processing, detect the main source direction to do the directional correction on the apparent velocity and identify wave types so that we can choose the certain surface wave invariant process. The second part is the dust data I have been working on, the dust data recorded by the Stanford Dust Array. This is the location of Stanford Dust Array. The yellow curves represent the roads, and the traffic noise from each of these roads had a contribution to the recorded dust data. This is a zoom-in view of the array. The optical fiber cable was deployed in a PVC conduit about 1 to 2 meters below the surface only relies on gravity and friction. In this project, we only process the data recorded by the fab cable labeled by the red line since the results obtained from Max Landa's data have been published. We can use them as benchmark. And we use the data recorded by the fab cable labeled by the yellow dashed line to detect the propagation direction of the main source. This is a piece of 100 second dust data after being applied to 2 to 2.5 Hz bandpass filter. We can see the near field traffic noise are quite strong. The near field traffic noise need to be removed because they are directly packed to the array and not contain the subsurface medium information. The near field traffic noise need to be removed because they are direct impact to the array and not contain the subsurface medium information and will contaminate the far field noise. Besides, it obeys the plan wave assumption. So the problems are how to remove the near field traffic noise since it's very difficult to be filtered, and how to find the direction of propagation of the ambient noise wave field. It's been for me still applicable. How to identify polarity and wave types. Next part is processing workflow. So we first apply a 2 to 10 Hz bandpass filter then remove the near-field traffic noise using path interpolation and remove the specs using median filter. After that, we apply FK filtering. Then we extract the chronograms using cross-correlation. After that, we use phase shift method to get the disparate curve. We detect the main source direction using music beamforming and then apply the angle correction to the disparate curve. Finally, we obtain the shear wave velocity profile by the inversion of surface waves. These are the theory of path interpolation and cross correlation. And these are the theory of music beamforming and phase shift method. I won't talk about the details of the series. The surface wave inversion process is actually given a subsurface velocity model which contains the information of the number of layers, thickness of each layer, P wave velocity, S wave velocity, and density. A disparate curve then can be calculated using this model. By minimizing the difference between the synthetic disparate curve and the observed disparate curve, we can obtain the shear wave velocity model. So here are the results. This is the 100 second dust data after being applied a 2 to 10 Hz bandpass filter. And this one is after applied a 2 to 2.5 Hz bandpass filter. You can see the near field traffic noise has a very clear appearance on the data and the envelope of the near-field traffic noise is much bigger than that of the data, so it can be detected very easily. And this is the data after muting the near-field traffic noise, and this is the data after interpolation. It looks quite clean, and this one is the removed near-field traffic noise. Since the missing data are interpolated using the data nearby, we need to make sure the interpolated data has no influence on the disparate curve. This is a synthetic data example. This is the synthetic data, and this is data after muting some parts of the data, and this is the interpreted data. These are the phase velocity spectra corresponding to the synthetic data and the interpreted data respectively. We can see the two disparate curves match very well. This slide shows an example of the extracted chronograms. It's asymmetric. 
the signal propagating along this direction were generated from the traffic. It provides us the apparent velocity information. So we need to do the directional correction. Beamforming is commonly used on the vertical displacement recorded by the geophone. There is no amplitude projection or polarity reversal in the data. However, for dust data, both the two factors exist in the data, and they may influence the beamforming results. So I did some synthetic tests. The layout is designed according to the Stanford dust array. The intersection angle between these two lines is 85 degrees. These are the fixed velocities used to model the data. We use the really wave fixed velocity to model both the vertical displacement and the really wave string rate. All the data are modeled using random sources. From the equations, we can see that if the array is in L shape, there is always no polarity reversal in really wave string rate, while there is always polarity reversal in the love wave string rate. And for love wave string rate, there is always no amplitude projection. On the right side are the parameters for the synthetic data. Assuming there is the only one incident angle, the figures on the left are the synthetic data. You can see there is amplitude projection in the relay wave string rate. Although it's very hard to detect from the data itself, we can detect the polarity reversal from love wave string rate from the color gram. And the music beamforming can detect the incident angle clearly for each data. However, when the amplitude projection is too severe, the beamforming will not resolve the source direction from relay wave string rate. But we can first normalize the data and then do beamforming. This is a normalized relay wave string rate. You can see the corresponding beamforming result is accurate. We can also use the normalized chorogram to do the beamforming. The result of the duration is the same. When there are two durations of propagation of the ambient noise wave field, the two durations may not be resolvable from the vertical displacement since the resolution of beamforming is limited. And these are the two criteria of the resolution of beamforming. These are the beamforming results obtained from normalized relay and love wave string rate when there are two directions of propagation. We can see the result is accurate for love wave, while the result is not reliable for relay wave. This, this slide shows a more complex case when there is one incident angle and the two kinds of waves mix together. We can see the beamforming can provide us reliable results for all three cases. However, when there are two incident angles, beamforming cannot resolve the directions accurately when more than half of the data are really wave. These are the color grams obtained from the field data. We can have a primary guess of the source direction according to the change of the time lags with the channel number on the color grams. The direction should be the source east as the red arrow shows. We can also observe the polarity reversal on the color grams. And these are the beamforming results. We can see there is only one direction of propagation of the ambient noise wave field. The results are reliable according to our synthetic tests and the primary gas. So how to identify the wave type? From the color gram, we can observe the polarity reversal in each data. So the data must contain love wave. And there is also amplitude projection in the data. The data may also contain real wave. However, for real cases, the amplitude projection is not that reliable since the coupling condition of each part may be different. And there are two manholes near channel 70 and channel 83, so the coupling is very poor and the amplitude is very weak. Now we also have the ambient noise wave field propagation duration. From all the information we have, we can conclude that the surface wave recorded by the red line are mainly love wave. The next part is benchmarking with Max Long dust data. This figure is the box plot of 20 dispersion curves calculated from 20 100 second dust data after angle correction. We can see the dispersion curves are stable since they are lying in a small phase velocity range. On this figure, the red dots are the phase velocities calculated using Max Long dust data by Martin and the blue dots are the fixed velocities calculated using 100 second dust data. And the black dots are the fixed velocities obtained from spectral analysis by Thomas et al. The difference between our result and that obtained from Maslan dust data is about 60 meters per second. The error is acceptable 
besides, our result is quite consistent with that obtained by Thomas et al. This figure shows the inverted results. We can see the inverted dispersion curve matches well with the observed dispersion curve. In this figure, the black curve is the velocity model obtained by Thomas et al. The blue curve is the velocity model obtained by SPECA using Maslon dust data. And the red curve is the velocity model extracted from 100 cent dust data. We can see our result matches well with the two models, except for the, our velocity model seems shallower than that obtained using Maslon dust data. But our result is still reasonable, since there may have the presence of Franciscan group with shear wave velocity from 820 meters per second to 997 meters per second at the depths from 30 meters to 90 meters. The last part is conclusions. We have extracted reliable subsurface information using very short period of dust data. It indicates that dust data has the potential to be processed in real time and provides us early warnings before the hazards happen. And path interpolation can be used to remove the near field traffic, which is hard to be filtered and occurred at isolated time and space. When the array is close to our shape, amplitude projection of horizontally recorded dust data has no influence on music beforming. When there is only one propagation direction of the moon source, or the recorded dust data mainly contains lab wave. We also need to do more work on the wave type identification from the ambient noise recorded by dust. Okay, that's all the contents I have here. Thank you very much for your attention and welcome suggestions and questions.